Join me now, the Steenkamp family lawyer, Tanya Cohen. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me um, the, this morning. Uh, look, first, obvious question, do you think the, the parole is justified? It's part of our South African legal system. Um, Oscar Pasturias, the same as any other offender, is entitled to be considered for placement on parole once he's served a certain portion of his sentence. He has served that portion of his sentence. The parole board was presented with a file, with his profile. June and Barry, in March this year, were able to oppose that parole. And in November, when the parole board convened for the second time, June submitted a victim impact statement. So she was able to make her representations to the parole board. They considered that and they found him appropriate to place him out on parole. So that is our legal system. And as an attorney, of course, I have to accept and June accepts that is our law. Um, she's accepted it as such. What One thing that's been uh, uh, baffling me a little bit this morning, uh, to what extent does... Uh, the offender have to admit the crime in full in, in the South African system to then be able to be granted early release uh, as part of, uh, you know, meeting the standards of, of being properly rehabilitated. Because he, he obviously was convicted for murder, uh, and yet I think he still maintains it was all uh, an accident and he thought uh, that, that his girlfriend was an in intruder. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, he's always maintained this, that it's an intruder. June and Barry have always said that they believe the witnesses heard uh, an argument and then the shots. So they've never believed Oscar's version. And that is why June, at the parole hearing recently, in a victim impact statement, stated that she do still doesn't believe his version, neither did Barry. They didn't believe that he is rehabilitated and because of that, not properly remorseful. However, it's only one of the factors that the parole board takes into consideration. They, a further factor that they need to consider is, will he pose a threat to society? And obviously on what was placed before them, they didn't think that he, he is posing a threat to society. June is satisfied with the, with the conditions that the parole board imposed because one of them is that um, he must attend anger management courses and also uh, gender-based violence courses. So she feels hurt because those were two of the concerns that she placed before the parole board. Um, what's your assessment as to how uh, he will be welcomed by South African society. Is this, a, is this a case that people still focus on as, as much as perhaps we are here over in, in the UK? And does the wider South African population feel the parole is now legitimate? Uh, very much so. It's still very relevant in South Africa. And unfortunately, there's two schools of thoughts, those that believe Oscar's version and those that don't. So you know, how he will be accepted by the public depends on which person he meets. Are they, let's call it, in his camp or or not? Do they believe his version or not? So, but yes, it's very much uh, still prevalent in South Africa. And um, yeah, obviously his supporters will and are accepting him with open arms. Um, and uh, just finally, have you been uh, in, in touch with him or in sight of him in, in the last couple of weeks and months? Do you think that uh, he, he's been heavily uh, affected by his time in prison? Obviously, I saw him at the Victim Offender Dialogue uh, last year in June, uh, which I attended with Barry. And um, yes, obviously, I think once you've been incarcerated, you have to live um, a different ru uh, rules of the department, the food that you eat, your daily program is managed by them. So most certainly, yes, I I, I could see a change in his demeanour. Um, one would have to wait and see what happens uh, after a while, you know, now, now that he's being released into the custody, basically, of his family, his uncle. Tanya Cohn, thanks so much for joining us.